this is going to be our static IP address, static IP address simulation, demo simulation. Now, I want you to notice that you actually have three networks right here. This will be your very first router. This is your second router. Notice that there's a route between the two of them. And the actual name of the route is 10.0.0.0. There's also, on this router right here, there's a route right here. And notice that this interface is 10.1.0.1. On this router right here, there's another route right here. And this interface is 10.2.0.1. And the network in the middle is 10.0.0.0. So the name of this network it's going to be 10.2.0.0, and it's a 24-bit mask. So the name of this network right here is going to be 10.1.0.0, and it's also 24-bit. And then the network right here, its name is 10 0 0 slash 24. I have all my three networks right there. Uh, so we're going to take a look at the, the actual configuration of this and this. So you can see that they actually belong into the, this network. This guy belongs to this network. And we'll take a look at this configuration on each router. Uh, and you'll see that I actually identify that, 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 and that right there. We will then ping this guy to ensure that we do have good connectivity there. And then from here, we're going to ping this guy to ensure that we have good connectivity there. Then we're going to attempt to ping from here all the way up to that interface and see what happens. That's going to be our first set of tests. Okay, so let's take a look at our first computer right here and take a look at the actual IP configuration. Notice 10102, it's a member of 10100. And just as best practice indicate, I dedicated the very first IP address on that network to this physical interface right here. And then I assigned the next one to an actual computer. So we should be fine right there. I'm going to come back to that. We'll go to this computer right here. We we'll take a look at its configuration. And notice 102. So it is in the right network. Same statement and argument. Uh, as the one from here. We're going to take a look at each router. Now, this router have two interfaces, one in the 10.0.0 and one in the 10.1.0.1. I am in router 0. I'm going to do uh, show running config to take a look at my full configuration. And this fast Ethernet interface, notice is 10.0.0.1, which is represented right here by dot one, ten zero zero dot one, and say mask as a network name. So this is the interface. This interface is this one that it is talking about. Now in zero one, which happens to be this network right here, it is ten one zero one. So that is fine so far. We're gonna to come to this router right here. Show running config. And we're going to take a look at the actual configuration interfaces. And again, the interface 00, 00 happens to be 10002, meaning it belongs to this network right here. This one has been identified as dot one. This one has been identified as dot two right there. And then the interface right here belongs to this network. And it happens to be 10201. You can see it right here. Very good. Now, the next step that we want to do is we actually want to be able, we want to check to see if we can ping from here to this interface right here to ensure that we do have good connectivity right there. And then we're going to do the same thing right here. Very good. So let's try to do that. Let's go to the first computer right here. And we're actually going to simulate going into its command prompt. And then we're going to do ping. Uh, that's going to be 10. One, oh, sorry, ten, one, zero, one, and there you go. I can reach that. So that what it's telling me right here. 
what this is telling me is that actually from here up to here I have good connectivity. Let's try the other side. Let's see what happens on the other side. I'm going to go to this side right here. I'm going to simulate the command prompt of the computer. And I'm going to try to ping from here to that interface right there. Very good. So I'm going to do ping 10.2.0.1. And look at that. We actually have good connectivity. So from here to here we get, OK? So let's close that for a second. And so far we've proven if we have one network here, we have another network here, another network here. So far, connectivity between here and there is good. Connectivity between here and there is good. Next thing we want to do is we want to try to go from here all the way up to that guy. Okay? To see if we have good connectivity. And then we want to do the same thing in the other direction. So we're going to bring up my simulated computer, open up my simulated command prompt. And let me minimize this. Make it smaller so that we can see what's going on. So we're going to try to go from here to that interface right there. So I'm going to do ping 10, 0, 0, 1. It's taking its time. Remember, I'm trying to ping from here all the way to that interface right there. And notice that it's timing out. It doesn't know how to get there at all. Okay? Maybe the other direction we have better luck. So the other direction will be from here all the way up to here. So let's see if we have better luck in there. I'm going to simulate my command prompt. Let's put that right here so you can see it. Ping 10. Zero, zero, two. And again, it's timing out. It doesn't know how to get from here to here. It doesn't know at all. Now, let's take a look at what's going on. If we go to the router and we take a look at its configuration, notice that nowhere in the router I have, in fact, I configure right here the interfaces, but right under it, there's no routing table. Neither one of the routers have a routing table that helps me decide how to get to this network and how to get to that network. So this router needs to learn how to get to that network, and he gets to that network by through this port right here. This router needs to know how to get to that network, and he gets to that network through that here. I have two ways to learn that. I can do it manual, or I can do it dynamically. I'm going to, the first discussion we're going to have is manually. So we're going to go back to this router and configure it manually and run the same test again. Very good. I went ahead and, uh, and configured the parameters for you guys. These are the parameters right here, as you can see them. Since this is not a class on uh, configuration, it's just a tutorial. I didn't want you guys to, to go through the whole process and, and take a lot of time. But this dialog window you see here belongs to that router. This dialog window here belongs to that router. And right here is the syntax that we talked about. You could actually, in the syntax again, would be IP route, meaning it's a manual route, the target network, and then either the target next hub or the physical interface. The physical interface. Uh, physical interface you're going to send it. So if you read this, I am saying, if I happen to be here and I want to target that network, send the traffic out of this physical interface. That's exactly what it says there. And then in here, if I want to target that network, send it out this physical interface. That's exactly what I was saying. So now I have the IP table. I have that routing table. And remember, we talked about that. The reason we had connectivity to here, but we could never go 
either to that router or to here was basically because this router or this one for that matter do not have the IP route tables and we just build that manually. We're going to test this now. We're going to go to this computer right here. We're going to come up with the simulated uh, uh, dialog window so we can send the ping. And we're going to do what I call walking the ping. Again, we're going to test the connectivity from this computer to here. That should work. Then we're going to test it to this interface. And it, because it's attached to the same router, it should work. Then we're going to ping this guy here. It should work because it's on the other side of that same network. So it will know. Then we're going to ping that interface here. And if we build our routing table, it should be fine. Notice this interface. Make sure it belongs to that network. And we have that network label right there. And then we're going to ping the computer all the way back to here. And since we built here, my route going back, each one of these guys should find, figure out how to get back to this guy right there because it's in the routing table. So let's go ahead and do that. First, we're going to go here and we're going to see the results. So I'm going to open this guy. I'm going to simulate the first ping right there from there to there. So let me minimize this for a second. Make it a little bit smaller so it fit right there. And then I'm going to come right here. I'm going to do ping. And that one is 10.1.0.1. And notice that that actually is, in fact, working right there. It worked out pretty good. Want to see that? So the next one I want to do is I want to go from here to here. That's my next one. And I'm going to do ping. 10.0.0.1 and it worked pretty good once we know how to get to places it does work pretty good my next one is going to be from here to that interface I'm going to do ping 10.0.0.2 and look at that again once you have the uh, the routes in your system it works out pretty good Oh, there was a hiccup there, one of them timed out. Not big deal, but that, that could have been, since it's a simulator, that could have been processing power on my computer. If we do it again, you see that it's working perfectly fine. And the very last one, actually, we got two more. We're going to go to the other side of that router, which turns out is in the same network as my computer on the other side. But let's, let's just try that. And again, we do have the route, so it should be able to work. 10.2.0.1 and sure enough not only did it found the interface but it could reply since this router also has a routing table okay and then of course the very last one which will be dot two and that's the IP address of this computer right here and now we have end-to-end -end connectivity that is static route is very simple to design it's very simple to work um, people like it it is difficult to scale uh, it is difficult to scale because for every router that you add then you got a this point to that this point to that and then this point to this guy this guy point to that guy and as you add routers through your network you can see that it's difficult to manage the other thing that happened is if this were to co collapse down so in fact, let's add another router right here, right? Uh, and I have this connection, and I have this connection. And I actually built a route there, a route here, a route there, a route here. I could actually, if this were to fail, there's no reason for this router to keep trying to send traffic that belongs to this network right now. It goes that way. He never know that that route failed. Of course, clearly you can see there that if this route fell, why not send it this way? Well, it doesn't trigger a dynamic update. It is static. The advantage of doing static IP addresses is since we're not exchanging information dynamically, somebody that happened to be snooping, listening, somebody with a computer, they might be listening to this, never get to learn the network topology, and never gets to inject and poison your routing table. So. It is said that if you do static routing, it is more secure in the sense that you cannot, you cannot poison the table. 
of course, part of security is self-healing and triggers updates. So if this were to fail, this guy will continue sending traffic there. He will never know until somebody complain. So it will not self-heal. Advantages and disadvantages of static routing. Advantages and disadvantages. On the pro, on the advantage side, uh, there's the concept of security. So even uh, even in, in most uh, non-vendor tests, security plus the ethical hacking, whenever they talked about secure routes, secure routing, they usually are referring to static routes. Uh, mind you, that it is secure because since they don't have dynamic route building process, you don't get to poison those tables. Uh, if you consider the high availability uh, trigger updates, uh, then, then you'll have the challenge that you'll never know when a route went down since it's static. Uh, there are other ways for you to secure a route, uh, and you can learn that in a more advanced uh, tutorial. But just to give you a lead on that, uh, you could uh, have uh, encrypted or, or challenge when a router connects to another router via dynamic protocol. You can challenge the other router and use a password and a username to make sure it belongs to your network. The other advantage you get with static is bandwidth utilization and CPU cal calculation. And that is since I don't get updates, I don't get trigger updates, I don't have to calculate topology, it's all manual. So you do save some CPU processing power in terms of calculating routes uh, and processing, uh, calculating routes and making decisions on which port to send the packet to. Uh, Nowadays, it's not a big deal. Again, nowadays, memory and CPU power is pretty, it's, it's very inexpensive. So it's not as big of a deal. Uh, disadvantage, uh, it's the actual concept of scalability. I, I can't get past 10 routers without making a big issue out of it. Uh, and also, I don't get trigger updates. Trigger updates are those updates when a, a route a network, two routers down the food chain, happens to change, I don't know anything about it, and I keep sending packet in that direction. Uh, and the only reason I learn about it is because somebody would call your tier one support group and complain of the fact that I cannot get to uh, my email server or through the internet and so forth.